Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. We are so excited, amen, to be here again in the land of the living and also on our broadcast, amen, Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. We think we have a good one for you tonight, dealing with uh, the kingdom, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. I thank God for that. Uh, you know, that uh, we've been talking about, uh, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Amen. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, either or. We just want you to know that yours is the kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise God for being here. We praise God, amen, for you, you, and yes, you, uh, you that are following along with us uh, as we move and we navigate, amen, uh, our way uh, through uh, the pandemic, which is, we believe with all, all that we have heard is basically ending. Uh, and it we're close to ending somewhere in there, but also we're just thankful that uh, you have been with us. Some of you have donated, given, and we we give you the opportunity. We believe me. Uh, I, I like what someone said one time. Uh, you know, just like they had blessed us, blessed our church, not us, but blessed our church, and they said that they had given in good soil and uh because they end up being very blessed by doing that and i'm i'm so thankful that people have done that people have sold uh into this ministry uh we're not you know uh doing funny stuff goofy stuff all that we're trying to take care of our own business so if you choose we have a cash app which is a uh, garden of peace worship uh or we have a zale which is, uh, you know, um, uh, stick39 at yahoo.com. Of course, I'm the name Mario Shaw. So either or, and uh, those donations no doubt will be forwarded for the kingdom of our dear son, God's dear son, Jesus Christ. So amen. So we're going to look qu uh, quickly not quickly. We're going to take our time. We love Bible study. We love studying the Word of God. I hope you have a heart and a mind that loves study. Not just singing, not just dancing for the Lord, not just, you know, a lot of things that we do, uh, but you have a heart that is, uh, as he said, as sincere babes as new, new, <laughs> since you're made, amen, uh, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. In other words, this is what's going to make the morrow uh, strong in your life. This is what's going to make your spiritual life strong is that you eat of uh, the spiritual rock. Hallelujah. And uh, that rock was Christ. But the Bible says that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So that rock that we're talking about is also the Logos, the word of God. Hallelujah. He's called the word. And if you eat of that word, you know, one time uh, the uh, prophet Ezekiel, the Lord told him, eat that roll, eat all of it, <laughs> you know. And uh, he said it was sweet to his taste, but it was bitter going down. And sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's sweet, but then there's a bitterness when you realize what it's going to take to accomplish the goals uh, that you have to do for God. Hallelujah. So the word is invigorating. The word is uh, develops us. The word gives us what need sustenance. Amen. Just like you eat daily, your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner. Amen. The word of God goes in. And that's why we won't follow erroneous doctrine, doctrines. And one time Paul calls them doctrines of devils. We won't follow that. You know, we won't follow uh, funny stuff, goofy stuff, you know, because we'll know the truth. Jesus said, you may, you, you'll know the truth. And the truth will make you free. It's about freedom. 
It's not about being locked down. Amen. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free, not the yoke of bondage. If you don't have freedom in Christ, then you need to find another place to worship. Hallelujah. And I don't mean freedom to speak what you want to speak, jump up in the service and all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a freedom in your worship, freedom in your knowledge, freedom in what you do for God. God did not lock us up. He freed us. You know, some people are locked up when they come to salvation. They're locked up. You know what he says, you know, some people have that attitude in the book of Colossians. He talked about, you know, they have uh, the attitude of, uh, you know, don't do this, don't do that. You know, and it, it's, that's not it. That's not it. That's not the attitude. I, I can't do this. I can't do that. I told you many times, I said, when the brother approached me, amen, when God first saved me and the brother approached me, told me, said, man, you know, if you're a Christian, you can't do this. And of course, they were, you know, as a young man, of course, they were talking about sex and you can't have sex and all that kind of stuff, which, of course, is the norm, you know, what, you know, young people and teenagers think is the, you know, best thing out there. And he went on to tell me what I couldn't do. I couldn't cuss. I did all those things, you know. But what I told him was, I don't want to do those things. Once the Holy Ghost comes on the inside, you don't want to do those things. You are a different creature, different creation. That's why he says you're a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. New perspective, new way of looking at life. New, my way of looking at life today is not the same as the way I looked at it at 17, what I figured my life would be like. It is nothing like what I thought. I never thought to be any kind of minister or anything like that. None of that stuff did I ever think about. But yet then came Jesus. Amen. Then came Jesus. So we're thankful. Amen. We're going to look in the Holy Writ, the scriptures. Amen. In the book of uh, Matthew, chapter number five, we're going to deal with one of the Beatitudes, and we're going to go through some of the other uh, scriptures as well. But one of the Beatitudes, which talks about the kingdom of God, because you're in a kingdom now. You were in the kingdom. Paul calls it the kingdom of darkness. When we weren't saved, you were part of the kingdom of darkness. You were part of a kingdom, amen, that was ruled by the prince and the power of the air. You were ruled by the darkness of this world. That's why you didn't want to come to church. That's why you didn't want to participate in godly things. That's why you were, had set in your heart to do evil. <laughs> I know, because that's what I was doing. Those are the things I was doing. I had it set in my heart to do evil. I woke up thinking about, you know, smoking weed. I woke up thinking about who could I jack. You know, all these things. That is in the heart of the children of darkness. Amen. But we're not part of that anymore. Here's what he says. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, but theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And that is Matthew 5 and 10. Uh, King James Version uh, Amplified says this, Blessed and happy and enviably fortunate and spiritually prosperous in the state in which the born-again child of God enjoys and finds satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of his outward conditions. Mm, that's what blessed and happy and enviably fortunate and spiritually prosperous means. It means in the state in which the born again child of God enjoys and finds satisfaction 
in God's favor and salvation, regardless of his outward conditions. Are those, now that's a quote, are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Now who has this? Those that are persecuted for righteousness sake, for being and doing right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen, 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 amen. So when you are persecuted, for doing right, for doing for the kingdom. When you're persecuted for that, amen. It says yours is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what he said. That's what he said. For being and doing right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we know from the time Jesus said this all the way through uh, the apostles, all the way through the fathers, Ignatius and Polycarp and, and all of these different church fathers that followed them, uh, we know, amen, that uh, they, many of them were martyred for the Lord, for the gospel's sake. You know, your Timothy's, your, you know, we know James, of course, uh, was martyred in the book of Acts, but they were doing right, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen was martyred. Amen. Of course, we know the apostle Paul, uh, the apostle Peter, you know, uh, they were martyred. Uh, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's why the apostle Paul would make this statement in the book of Second Timothy chapter four, he would say, for I am ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Amen. So that's why he can look at that for such. If you're persecuted and he was in prison, he was in a Roman prison awaiting his second time to appear before Nero Caesar. First time he went, you know, he was held, you know, he got out, but now he is getting ready to go before Caesar again. And he is already knowledgeable that he's not coming out. He's already knowledgeable that this is it. So he says, for I am ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. <laughs> but he's not upset. He's not uh, mad. He's not, he's rejoicing. As he says, I finished my course. I've kept the faith, and that's what's most important. Through anything that you are going through, anything you are dealing with, that you keep the faith. You keep the faith, not only as you're facing death, but as you're facing anything in life. Hallelujah. As you're faith facing, you know, your mortgage payments, as you're facing, hallelujah, uh, your home and maybe being taken from you, your car being repoed, anything like that. When you face these things, you face them, I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. You have to have that tenacity that Paul had when Paul said, I believe God. When that way they were on shipwreck, God, I mean, Paul said, an angel has stood beside me and said that if you abide in the ship, you'll be saved. And I believe God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Another place, what he said, he said in Timothy here. In Timothy, what did he say? Let me see if it's first Timothy or second Timothy. 
think it's I think it's uh, actually First Timothy, but I'm gonna get it. I want to say it. Let's see. Okay, let's see here. Uh, who was a foreign blasphemy? Now, I'm looking for the scripture I know in whom I have believed, going back to have faith. He said, I know in whom I have believed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know. Hallelujah. I'm not speculating. I'm not, you know, wishy washy all over the place. <coughs> wondering, <coughs> I know in whom I have believed. Hallelujah. Let's see. Let's see. Well, else so I'll have to actually look it up. I didn't want to do that. Because uh, <coughs> I know, okay, I will. It's really crazy because a lot of times, uh, yeah, he says in verse 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, and I looked just at it and just kept on going. He said, for the which cause I also suffer these things nevertheless. I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What I have committed unto him against that day. I know whom I have believed. Hallelujah. I know. Hallelujah. I like what 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 uh, I always try to look a lot of times is two or three versions I like to look at. But here's what Amplify said. This is why I suffer as I do. Still, I am not ashamed, but I know him and I am personally acquainted with him whom I have believed with absolute, listen to that, absolute trust and confidence in him and in the truth of his deity. And I am persuaded beyond any doubt mm, that he is able to guard that which I have entrusted to him until that day. What day? Wherein I stand before him. Hallelujah. That's what the apostle Paul was saying. That's what he meant. I know in whom I have believed, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that is the faith that he had. And see, when he brought that up, you know, about himself being persuaded, he said, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded. And of course, you know, you can't, you always think about, you know, eight chapter of Romans. When he said, I am persuaded, then neither life nor death nor persecution, no, you know, all these things shall separate us from the love of God. Chapter eight, right, right in those last few, uh, last three or four verses of that chapter, he said, I'm too sweet. I like that. I'm going to get that. I'm persuaded. Hallelujah. I'm persuaded. And he wasn't joking either. He's persuaded. Here's what he says. Hallelujah. He says, verse number 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And again, uh, I look at one translation, said, for I'm persuaded that not even death or life, angels or rulers, things present, things to come, hostile powers even, hallelujah, will separate us from the love of God. Amplified says, for I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt, 
goes back to what we just said when he said, I know in whom I believe and am persuaded. Same thing, beyond any doubt that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor power. He deals with the unseen world. Ain't no devil. That's why we can say, won't no devil, no devil can stop you. Paul said, I'm persuaded without any doubt. Talking about the kingdom of God. Talking about five and five and 10 of Matthew, where he said, no persecutions, no people that are persecuted for righteousness sake. Shall, theirs is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. So he's saying here, for I am persuaded. Why are you persuaded? Without any doubt. Because it goes back to what he said in one, one of those, those definitions was because I know him. I know in whom I have believed. I'm acquainted with him. I know. See, the thing is, it's not God. Hmm. It's our relationship with God. It's not God. It's us. I always. And, 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 you know, I learned this a long time ago, and I always prayed this way. And we're going to get to that in our lesson as well. But I always prayed this way because, nevertheless, not my will. <coughs> but thy will be done. And why do I pray that way? Because it's not my show. I remember I was watching. Uh, I was watching uh, uh, Doctor Strange. You know, some of you have seen that movie. And right before the was it? What was she called? Not the Great One. She was called. She was called something. The, the what? Well, the lady that was the the lady who had been alive for years and years and years. Uh, she was called the an eternal one, whatever she was called. But what I want to say is that she said to Dr. Strange, uh, she made a statement and she said, one thing you have to learn and you could be great, but she said, you have to learn. It's not about you. And we as people, of, a lot of these Marvel, DC coming, a lot of these things have spiritual implications in them. I know you have to know that. We used to watch movies. I remember Bishop Horn and myself, we'd go to the movies and things like that, and we would see all kinds of spiritual implications from the movie. You know, I remember Excalibur and, uh, you know, I mean, some of the things that Merlin would say, and you're like, man, look at that. That goes right along with the word, and a lot of it does. A lot of it does. That's Star Wars, you know. I, I never forget in Star Wars where, uh, uh, you know, uh, Yoda tells uh, Luke, he says, you know, move the move the spaceship, you know, move the ship. And Luke goes up there and he mm, tries to do it, and he said it's too big. And, and, <laughs> and Yoda says, it, size matters not. You judge me by my size. If you know anything about Star Wars, you know Yoda's that big. <laughs> That big. And uh, he said, You judge me by my size, and well, you should not. He said, Because my ally is the force. Of course, you know, like us, you judge us by, you know, whether I got a, a big head, a little head, or, you know, whether I'm fat, skinny, all that. You judge me by that, but you don't understand my ally is God. And I am persuaded. <laughs> hey, glory. I'm persuaded that neither life nor death, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come will separate me from the love of God. So he goes on. And after he says, size matters not, you judge me by my size. And then uh, Luke says, well, you want the impossible. 
you know. And uh, so Luke walks off the scene and Yoda stands there and he levitates whatever, you know, levitates the ship all the way over to where they are. And as it comes down, Luke said, he says, I don't believe it. And he, then Yoda as master says, that is why you fail because he didn't believe. And believe me, you, if you don't think that's biblically <laughs> sound, it is. Why do we fail sometimes? Because we don't believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. In my name, they shall take up circles. All these things are because we believe according to your faith. So be it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we talk about, you know, being persecuted, your faith. Paul said, I kept the faith. And like I say, even though his circumstances were the fact that he kept the faith, even till now he was getting ready to be put to death. But ours is just the same. It doesn't matter. Sometimes your job is going to be put to death. Sometimes, your, you know, some of your bills, I mean, you're looking at them saying, oh, my God. Ah, they have a saying that says, you know, sometimes we look at our bills and say, oh, how big my bills are, you know, and we tell God how big our bills are, but we don't tell our bills how big our God is. Ancient One, that was her name in Dr. Strange. The Ancient One says to Dr. Strange, it's not about you. And saint of God, it's not about us. My pastor, Bishop Robert W. McMurray, used to say it all the time. If I can help somebody as I travel along this way, then my living shall not be in vain. It's about, I mean, Dr. King preached a sermon, what have you done for others? That was, that was a powerful sermon. I heard that sermon years ago. I mean, man, in the 70s, I heard that message. What have you done for others? What is your life about? Is your life about you? Because what happens is when God Almighty steps on the inside, you change. We talked about being newborn as a newborn babe. Desire the sincere milk of the word. And what does it do? It teaches you how to love agape. agape. It teaches you how to reach out. Step out of your comfort zone. Bless somebody, love on somebody, encourage somebody, strengthen somebody. That's what it teaches us. That is not, if I, we say it all the time, if you take care of God's business, he'll take care of yours. The thing is, do we? believe that? Do we believe it? Okay. Let me read something to you. It says, when you surrender to Christ and follow his way of doing things, he will lead and guide your path. When you surrender your heart and ways to God, choose to let the old things go. Choose to let the old man die. Let Christ do a new work within the borders of your heart. When you surrender to Christ, and follow his commands. Not everyone may agree with your lifestyle. When you are in him, not everyone may not feel comfortable with your decisions. Choose to yield to God and surrender to his way of doing things. That's it. People won't believe in you. People won't agree with you. People won't agree with your lifestyle. People won't agree with you going to church. People won't agree with you abstaining from things. 
people won't agree that you no longer do certain things anymore. They won't agree. But it's the right thing. It's the godly thing to do. It's what you should do. Surrounded, surrendering to Christ is a choice. In fact, it's a daily decision. Remember the Lord said in the book of Deuteronomy, choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose every day you choose. You know, you say, well, I made a decision once and for all. You're making a decision every day. Choose life. Choose life. Choose God. Because there are people that have gotten up who were choosing God and have said, I'm through. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do. See, and that's when it's about us again. What's good about us is that you want to make yourself better. You want to increase your faith. You want to strengthen your testimony and all those things so that you can bless. Sometimes we have to understand many times on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever you have, you know, these things, people are not on there just bragging. People are trying to tell you what God has done. And if he has done it for me, he'll do it for you. Was that song? God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. I'm not bragging. I want to tell you what God has done. Because if he did it for me, he'll do the same thing for you. He said, I am no respecter of person. When Peter got ready to get up on the day of, uh, of the day that he had introduced to the Gentiles through Cornelius, and it said, he said, I perceive that God uh, is no respecter of persons. He'll bless you. If you do the things that the apostles did, you will be blessed like the apostles were. If you do the things that some of your brethren did, if you burn the midnight oil, like a lot of the pastors that are pastoring now, the preachers that are uh, evangelizing and doing things like that, if you burn the midnight oil like they did and do, then you'll have the ministry they have. That's what he means by God is no respect to a person. See, people, mm, my God, my God. People get it mixed up, you know, say, well, you know, I don't understand how that works because it seems like God favors certain people. He does. But what he means is if you do what Peter did, you're going to get the same result. He's no respecter of persons. That just means if you do what that person did to be blessed you'll be blessed. That's why he made the statement. Jesus made the statement. He says, his sun, sun shines on the just as well as the unjust. It's the same sun. Just because they're not saved doesn't mean the sun doesn't shine. If a man goes to school, if a man uh, goes to college and everything, he'll be blessed. You don't have to just be saved to get a couple of dollars to rub together. He's no respecter of persons in the sense of God does not. Now we know. See, look at this, look at this, look at this, 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 uh, looking at it both ways. Look at this. God has no respect to a person, Peter says. I perceive, I'm going to turn there right quick because I want you to see it. It's chapter 10 of Acts. Let me 
right. Chapter 10 of Acts. Okay, verse number 34. It says, then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. <laughs> Listen to what the English standard says. So Peter opened his mouth and said, truly I understand that God shows no partiality. The word we use today, uh, the hokum says, now I really understand that God doesn't show favoritism. See, Peter had to understand that because Peter was under the influence of the Old Testament where he figured that God only dealt with Jews. See, yeah, how do you understand that? Because when you look at chapter number 10, you look at chapter number 10 and you see that, you know, uh, first of all, a curtain was let down, all kind of evil, I mean, not evil beasts, but all kind of creeping things and everything, things he had never eaten in his life because he was a Jew and they did not eat that, you know, the kosher cuisine that they have and everything. He had never, he said, I have never, and look at this, look at this, I'll tell you what he said. He says, I have never, he said, he said, the voice came to him and said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice said unto him again the second time, what God has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done three times. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Okay, so he was still under the assumption that this gospel was for Jews, even though one eight acts. Jesus said, "Behold, I, you know, he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth." Yet. He got stuck. So now, after he's seen this vision, and now God tells him to go down to Cornelius' house, and now he's standing in front of the Gentiles, and he says, I perceive, because of the vision I've had, I perceive that God is not about favoritism. And I perceive, in other words, he said, and then the Holy Ghost fell on him. Bam! And they spoke in tongues just like they did on Pentecost. And then he knew because what did they do? They came, they repented, and then they got the exact same results. What did I just say? That's the, un, that's the non partiality about God. If you repent, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you repent, if you're baptized, now it doesn't mean you have to be baptized first because they did. They received the Holy Ghost because in their hearts, not only did they repent, but they obeyed and they believed. Remember, I know some had three, some, but we at Greater Bethlehem, we had five. Here, believe, repent, be baptized, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. That was, in a synopsis, the plan of salvation, you must hurt, you must hear. How can they hear? How can they believe if they have not heard? Then you must believe, then you must repent. And said, how can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? Well, God, you got to be sent. Problem is, a lot of people are not sent. A lot of people have just, <laughs> no man taketh this honor 
unto himself. Look at Hebrews. We'll go to Hebrews right quick. Let's go to Hebrews right quick. Yeah, Hebrews, yeah. Let's see here. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Okay. Let me let me find that scripture. <laughs> Glory. Okay, let me do this right quick. Okay, let me, let me do that right quick. Okay, so Hebrews chapter number five. Ooh, God, I tell you. Chapter number five, verse number four. And no man taketh dishonor. I don't want to just read that by itself. He says, For every high priest taken among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God, that he may offer gifts, sacrifice for sin. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity, and by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sin. Now he says, For every high priest. Now we know that we're not under the high priest and you know that that legalistic system a man of the priest anymore jesus is our high priest and he says and no man taketh this honor unto himself but he that is called of god as was aaron okay mm -hmm. line up on line precept one precept you find out that you have to be called of god god calls you yeah, yeah. well uh it's no Every preacher, every prophet was called. Samuel, the first prophet, he was called. Heard the voice, Samuel, Samuel, ran to Eli. Eli said, what? He said, you call me? No. Three times. Then Eli got the message and said, next time you go back, he calls you again. He said, say, speak, Lord. And that's, he was called of God. The Bible said he let none of his words fall to the ground. That's how much in tune, because what? He was persuaded. He said, I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded without any doubt. That was Samuel. Jeremiah, in Isaiah, you see they were called of God. Those are the ones that we see that were called. You know, we see Isaiah's calling. Who will go? And whom can we send? And Isaiah said, send me. Jeremiah, I knew you. Before you were formed in the belly, I knew you. I ordained you. A prophet unto the nations. Ezekiel, he called him. Amos said, we were we had our lesson, our Sunday school lesson was in the book of Amos. Amos said, I was not a prophet, neither the son of a prophet. I was a farmer. Yet God called him. God called him. God calls us. We don't call ourselves. I told you. <laughs> told you. I came to church, I got saved. I was excited about the Lord. What I wanted to do was sit on the front row, get my shout. All that other, wasn't, I wasn't even interested until the Lord called me. 
And I thought, I mean, because right after I got saved, he called. Most people take a while. Right after I got saved, he, he started dealing with me, calling. And I was like, man, come on. You know, I don't want to be a preacher. I don't want to do that. I mean, I wrestled with God six months. I remember when I first went and saw the bishop. I didn't know what bishop was going to say. I was still new to the church, not new to ministry. I was still new to God. I didn't know what he might say. He might say, get out of here. You ain't called by God. What, the, man, what you talking about? You don't even know God good yet. I didn't know what he was going to say. But I tried to not acknowledge my calling. And God would not. And, and you know, <laughs> oh, amen. Sometimes today I wonder, <laughs> Lord, were you? Is, were you on track or what? <laughs> ah, God. Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. We've got about 10 minutes. And uh, I want to go back. It says, surrendering to Christ is a choice. In fact, it's a daily decision. Would you rather seek, submit, and obey God and get his well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or would you rather worship the praise of men? Choose to surrender to God, seek his well done, follow his word, follow God's way of doing things. Don't worship the opinion of man. Don't be chained by their way of doing things. Surrender to God's way of doing things and get his results. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. The world may not understand why you choose to worship Christ. They won't understand. Don't worry about it. It says, when you are in Christ, your taste change. Your spiritual appetite changes. Your desires change. When you are in Christ, you are set apart. You are different. You are made new. You are his. Things change about you. You start talking about the word. You start talking about God. You start, I had people that got away from me. They said, man, you talking about the Lord. Too much. You talking about church and religion. Why you, you got to talk about that all the time? Because it was in me. I went down to the corner where I hung out with the brothers. And I went down there to tell them about Jesus. I went all the way around Compton telling people about Jesus. Bishop McMurray used to say, how many people have you won to Christ? How many people have you told about Jesus? And he would talk about the stars in your crown for people you have witnessed to. I remember sometime he would say, uh, can you look in this congregation and see anybody in here that you have won to the Lord? You have brought to God. You know, and uh, because that's what Bethany was about. It was a soul saving station. What did I do? I go back to the ancient one. It's not about you. If you're persecuted for righteousness sake, for doing the gospel, doing the, the ways of God, yours is the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I had more here that I had, but I'm going to get, I got, <laughs> I got three lessons here. I'm going to get to this next week. But I'm saying to you, my brothers and my sisters, I'm saying what I was talking about for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. We went through a lot of things. Scripture says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. But theirs is the kingdom of heaven. But we went through some other things as well. We did things, and this might be backwards, you know, the way we're doing it today. But it says believe. Believe. I wore it because I knew 
we'll be talking about your faith, even your faith. And I want to read that in John. I love what John says about what overcometh the world. What overcometh the world? And he said, even your faith. And that's found Uh, let's see, that's found in chapter number. Let's see what in every spirit of the minute. Okay, let me see. Overcometh, and this is that which overcometh the world, even our faith. And that's the scripture I want, and I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. I know I have that mark. <laughs> but even when I have a mark, sometimes I can't find it. But, uh, you know, we will. We will. Uh, trying to look over stuff real fast. Okay, yeah, that's it. And it's in chapter number five. It says, verse four, he says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That's it. That's it. And I want to. And the Amplified says, for everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continuing, persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God. I am persuaded. Neither life nor death. No powers nor spirits, nor angels, nor things to come, nor things past shall separate. Because for us, it's for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It is, we are persecuting, but for us, it's for the kingdom of God. I tell you, I love it. As I get ready to close here, amen, I just want to say to you, believe God. Whatever it is, be persuaded. Believe, I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded. That's without doubt. See, and you know where that comes from? Knowing him. That I may know him. What is that? Gnosko, have experience with him, relationship with him, acquainted with him. Not oida, which means I have a knowledge of him. I know, you know, like back in the day, I used to say, you know, uh, people, I, even the brother that witnessed to me, held a cell, he said to me, he said, do you believe in God? And I remember saying, yeah, I believe in God. And I believe there is a God. See, that's not Gnosko. That's all he does. That means I have a perception that there is a God somewhere, but I don't have a relationship. But Gnosko said that I might know him. As Paul said, you know, for uh, I have believed and persuaded, for I know, as Gnosko, I am, I have an acquaintance with him. Hallelujah. I have an acquaintance with him. I know him. And one time, one place Paul said, well, rather that I am known of him, because you know what? I don't know him like I want to. I don't care how well I know him. I don't know him as well as I want to. And that's the life of a child of God. You're always 
stretching forth to God. You're always wanting more of God. You're always seeking. You're always knocking. You're always, oh God, you're always knocking. You're always seeking. You're always looking for that door to open. Says, seeking you shall find, not in the door will be opened unto you. Hallelujah. That's what you're looking for. Seeking, you're knocking, and you're looking for results from God. Hallelujah. And that is a daily. He says, He says, choose you this day whom you will serve. Well, my brothers and sisters, I just want to say this. Tomorrow night is our prayer. Amen. We're together at six o'clock every Thursday night. If you have prayer requests, you can get on our page, Garden of Peace Worship Center page. We have actually two of them. You can put in your prayer requests or you can join us at 605-475-2090. And the access code is 1453. 769. You can join us in prayer. Everybody's welcome. There are no, you know, this is for the garden. This is for everybody. And if you're on there and you want to pray, you can let us know that I'd like to pray as well. We're only on there for 30 minutes. Amen. But powerful things have happened. We've seen, amen, people who were told they were going to die from cancer. We've seen them here when we prayed for them. We've seen healings, we've seen deliverances, we've seen salvation, all because we prayed. I'd like to say on behalf of Sister Shaw and myself, we love you, God bless you, and may heaven smile on you, ha! <laughs> may God richly bless you is our prayer.